Hi, folks. This is Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show. .com, the Chris Voss Show .com. Hey, we're coming here with a, another great review of an awesome product. One of my favorite lines, of course, the Canon Camera Line. You can uh, check out their cameras, of course, at usa.canon.com. That's usa.canon.com. Tell them Chris Voss sent you. And we're going to be reviewing today the top of the line, the god of all of the EOS lineup of Canon cameras, the Canon 1DX. And this is a most immaculate offering when it comes to uh, quality of camera. Uh, I've been using it for a couple weeks now, testing it out. It is like working with warm, soft butter. It's just the most beautiful experience you could possibly have with a camera and uh, just a joy to use. So uh, we're going to get into the review of this. This thing has got 18.1 megapixels in a full frame CMOS sensor. The full frame is very important when you're looking at cameras. And this thing, of course, has one being the Mac Daddy of the EOS line. This is pretty much the camera that's going to be at the very top when you look at all the cameras of the EOS line on Canon. So uh, it's got 14 bit analog to digital conversion. It's got a wide range of iOS settings from 100 to 51,200. Now, how that's important is to give you a wide range of settings makes it so that you know you can capture as much picture into your digital camera as you possibly can without having the noise that you would get when your ISO settings get high. And of course, most cameras are limited to how much ISOs they can reach. So this is very important when you're looking at buying a camera, is looking at the setting reach. And of course, this one does really well. Uh, you can shoot in bright, dim light, and it also has the next generation dual digit 5 plus image processors that are in this. Uh, it gives you enhanced noise reduction and blazing processing speed. Uh, just most of the Canons only have one of the Digic 5 image processors. This has two, so as you can imagine, it's capturing twice the amount of information. That's just insane. Looking through the eyepiece of the Canon 1DX, you're going to see a 61 point high density reticular autofocus. This is going to be a great cross tie pair that's going to help you find the perfect balance or the perfect focus of what you want to target with your subject. So uh, it's just awesome. You can easily flip through and breeze through them as you're shooting your subject and find the particular focus point you really want to get into. And of course, it helps you create great bokeh too. You have your ITR. It's an intelligent tracking and recognition autofocus for uh, accurate subject tracking. We shot it with this camera uh, doing bicycle races, and it was just immaculate being able to capture speedy, super fast bicycles blasting by us and being able to get just incredible detail. Another feature is it's got the EOS ISA, which is your intelligent subject analysis. Now on top of the two dual digit plus five plus image processors that are on there for enhanced noise reduction and processing speed, you've got its own Canon 4 digit image processor and it features a 100,000 pixel RGB mirroring sensor with subject and color recognition for reliable AE. It's got the EOS HD video with a manual exposure and multiple frame times all the way from 1080p on down and it's got a 4 gigabyte automatic file partitioning system which is pretty freaking awesome and gives you selectable all iframe or IBP compression. It's got super super shooting performance uh, just this thing rocks you hold the button down and it just bangs away anytime i've used the high speed uh, shutter when i've been around people they're just blown away to hear the machine just rock it uh it's got up to 12 frames per second which includes uh, shooting uh using a udm a cf card and there's two of them you can have in the uh, unit so you have two cards that you can save everything are it even does 14 frames per second in super high speed mode okay on the outside of the body it's got a magnesium alloy with it's uh, just built for the punishment you're going to put it through as a photographer in the pro 
getting out in the field and working with it. It's dust and water resistant and it's got an ultrasonic wave motion cleaning for improved vibration based the dust removal. That's really important because you're going to probably be working out in the world and it's going to get dirty and dusty and everything else. It's got an intelligent viewfinder with a superimposed LCD display. You're getting 100% field of view, which is very important. And it's got a 3.2 clear view LCD monitor on the back and gives you reflection resistance with multi-coating and high transparency materials so you can easily see what you're shooting and the results you're getting. Uh, it's got improved handling with the addition of new customized controls they've added enhanced recording options with dual card slots that uh, hold your cf cards gigabit ethernet terminal that's uh, pretty wild it's plugged right into the side that you can jam it in and go to work it's got compatible with uh, your canon wireless file transmitter and gps receiver very very cool okay so here we can see the pre-shoot mood or at least uh, being able to know what settings the camera are on we can see of course the f-stop and everything you can adjust through with the buttons and be able to make your adjustments of course it depends on which mode you're operating on whether you're manual or aperture or um, one of the other settings that come with the shoot the other thing that you have is when you're uh, doing your shots you can take and go back and review them and of course with that you can take a look at what images you might want to take and protect uh, you can rotate your images so you can see what they look like you can do a star rating on your images so you can see uh, you know save for ones for later that you think are going to be good and uh, raw imaging processing you can take and set that up to where you can have uh, shot settings or customize that as you go on the fly it's got highlight alert where you can show the highlights that uh, might have been on it if you're using that setting uh, the AF point display is always good you can see where your AF point fired or where you had a program to fire and that's important sometimes so you can see what's going on you can also set up to do your image jump skip uh, or how you want to take and utilize that format of the dial for your main dial Okay, so a lot of people have asked me, you know, what goes into the Canon 1DX? Why is it such an investment? And what are the aspects and customizations you can do that make it so special? Uh, Canon has thrown in everything, including the kitchen sink, with the EOS Canon 1DX. And they've done a beautiful job of it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to walk you through the menu. Now, we're doing a full review on separate videos. Uh, this is just going to be a menu-only video on YouTube. So be sure to search for those other videos and reviews we'll be doing with the full review of the Canon 1DX. So let's start off. This is the shoot menu, and we're going to go through and customize several different things here. The white balance, you can see here different features of the white balance you can take and adjust for and everything else. You can also set a custom white balance if you want to take and do that. You have that ability. We will go into two details on each of these. Here you can see you can set the white balance in uh, a a, B, G, M pattern. Color space, you can choose between uh, RGB and Adobe RGB. Uh, picture style, you can choose between several different picture styles to customize your menu and everything else. The beauty of this camera is just what you can do with it. Uh, here you can see lens aber aberration correction. It's sensing what lens is currently on the camera, an EF 135mm. So you can enable that or disable it if you want. You've got multiple exposure setups you can take and do here. Let's go to the next area of the shoot area. So you've got JPEG quality. You can take and adjust this between large M1, M2, and small. Uh, you've got image type size quality where you can choose what you want to shoot with, whether it's with raw, full raw, uh, and also or not create JPEGs, whichever you want to take and do. Uh, you've got your ISO speed settings here where you can take and adjust those. You've got your auto lighting optimizer. Long exposure noise reduction. This is important if you want to eliminate some noise. Uh, high ISO speed NR. This is good if you want to adjust that. And the highlight tone priority. You can enable or disable this sort of feature. Uh, moving to the third aspect of the shoot menu. You've got your image review. You can, of course, set this. Your beep, you can enable, disable. Your release shutter without card, on or off. Your mirror lockup, which is good to have if your mirror ever does lock up. You can uh, 
Obtain data for removing your dust using software. Your external speed light control. This can help integrate and work with your flash. So that's always important. Here you can customize some different things of what buttons will do for disable stills and movies. You can set everything up as the way you want it. Uh, the AF mode, you can choose between uh, live mode, uh, L live mode and quick mode. Uh, your grid display that you want to take in half when you're shooting. Your movie recording size, you can choose from also here. You've got your sound recording where uh, you can have a wind filter disablement. You can uh, auto set your sound recording fields and how you want them. You can do silent shooting and set up several different modes. And you can do metering timer where you adjust your meter times. Uh, let's go to the next area, time code. So time code, you can go in here, record account times, start time settings, record times, drop frame, enable, etc., etc. Uh, silent control, you can enable or disable this. When you're shooting movies, that's probably good to have sometimes. Movie shoot, you can uh, shoot some of your adjustment buttons there. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll go to the AF1, AF configure tool, uh, topic or area or tab, whatever you want to call these little babies on the top here. So you can choose between uh, different modes of AF shooting where you can shoot between different cases that are pre-set up, pre-designed. Of course, you can adjust the track sensitivity, accelerator, decelerator tracking. You can do all sorts of customization in here. Here you can adjust the uh, AI servo, first image priority or second image priority. Uh, you've got your USM lens electronic MF, and you can choose between several different functions there that you want to take and choose from. AF assistant beam firing, you can choose from here. One shot AF release prior, you can adjust that. Just an amazing amount of customization. So you've got your auto AF point selection here. You can choose between on and off. Lens drive when AF is possible. Selectable autofocus points, you can choose from either the full 61 or all the way just down to nine, whatever one you prefer. Several different manual selection points. Uh, your autofocus area selection method, you can use either the main dial or the M function button. Uh, your orientation linked to an AF point, you can choose between that and your initial AF point. Uh, you can adjust here whether you do it manually or use the one that's in the initial area there. There you go. All right, so let's go to the next step. You've got your manual autofocus point selection pattern you can choose from where it stops at the edges or it's continuous. Uh, it's got the auto point autofocus point display during focus. You can choose between several different ways you want that set up. The VF display illumination, you can do auto um, or you can just have an on or off. Uh, the AF status and viewfinder, you can choose between that and the autofocus micro adjustment as to how you want it to adjust. So those are all the ones in the AF area, tab, whatever you want to call them. Uh, now we enter the play tab. This is uh, where you can deal with protecting images, rotating images, erasing images, print order of images, and image copy. And then the next little button over, we'll go to raw image processing, resizing, rating, uh, slideshow, and image transfer. And of course, we don't have anything on this card to work with. And how you want your image jump to work. If you want to jump when you rotate the main dial, uh, 10 photos, 100 photos, or time, etc., etc. So you can choose all that stuff. Full customization. I mean, this is why you pay for this camera, because not only is it a great camera for shooting, it's got great stuff in it when you can adjust it just the way you want it. So you've got highlight alert here, where you can do that. And then... Uh, I think this is a pretty simple menu to yeah, just enable, disable. And then you've got an autofocus point, playback grid. You can choose between several that are there. Uh, histogram, you can choose between brightness or RGB. The play movie play count, record time or code time, time code, whichever one you want. Magnification, you can adjust the magnification adjustment as to what you want to take and blow up when you're looking at your pictures, everything else. And you can... And you set this up to control it over 
HDMI when you're playing this on your TV or something back all your pictures. So we'll enter the next tab which is your setup tab and you've got your record function card folder selection. Uh, there's two cards that you can put into the uh, unit for the 1DX. You've got your one number one CF card number two if you use two cards I should probably mention and you can to decide you know which one works for you and records first etc etc file numbering you can choose from here and control file names you can tr control auto rotate you can control whether you want to can do that to using your computer and of course how to format the cards when you put them in auto power off you can choose between that LCD brightness on your LCD screen that we're looking at actually right now uh, your date and time Oops. <laughs> It's like I've got an interesting time here, August of last year. So you can take and do your adjustments there. Language, English, you can choose from. And wow, it looks like there's a whole mess of different languages you can utilize with this device. I hope I never get it in the wrong setting. Uh, VF grid display, you can choose there. And the info button that displays stuff, you can even choose what it displays. So very good that way. Uh, the next one over is your video system. You can choose between NTSC and PAL. I believe PAL is really popular in uh, Europe and other countries. Uh, battery info, you can see how your battery is doing. I really, 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 really like this feature because you can actually go in and see, you know, how much time you're doing, how much uh, shutter count you probably have left, and how well your battery's performing. So that's very cool. Um, <laughs> sometimes you're looking at your camera going, I don't know how many shots I have left in here. So you can do sensor cleaning manually, or you can enable it to be done when you turn on and off the camera. Uh, communication settings function, you can choose different communications where you take can enable the networking part of the device. You can see the networking light coming on there. And if you're familiar with our walk around, there is a LAN networking plug that goes into the side of the uh, Canon 1DX. And when doing so, you can create a uh, LAN network and plug it into your LAN. So this, of course, works through that system of setting it up. And we're going to go ahead and disable that so that we don't have that red blinking light the whole time. Uh, GPS device settings you can disable or enable and of course once you do that uh, you've got to have a GPS unit connected this does not have its own internal one so but you have the option to utilize it if you so choose uh, let's see save load cam settings on the card you can save the, the card or you can load from the card uh, custom shooting modes you can set up C1 C2 C3 modes uh, when you're in custom shooting and you can basically have your settings all programmed in for you. You can clear all the camera settings back to normal so that you can start over again. That's no fun. Uh, copyright information. You can put in your author's name and copyright details for your photos. Those are important when you're sharing them on the internet. System status display. Uh, you can see here uh, how that works. Let's see, firmware. This is the firmware, of course, that tells you where your firmware is. And, of course, if you want to update it, you would use this menu to do so. So moving out of setup and into the CFN exposure tab, if you will. So we've got your exposure level increments. You can do this and adjust your stops. So you can do this in a third or ones or twos, half stop, whatever. Um, <clears throat> you get your ISO speed setting increment settings. Your bracketing auto cancel on or off. You got your bracketing sequence. You can adjust total customization of what you want to take and do. Number of bracketed shots. Spot meter link to the AF point. Safety shift. So you got that. You can adjust your shutter speed between your uh, aperture uh, and your ISO. And going back to the top, let's look at the next section in the C function two. So you've got restrict shooting modes you can take and do. So you can switch between customizations you want to take and do to restrict shooting modes you don't want to have pop up. That's good. Maybe you're just a person who just wants to shoot in manual all the time. So you can just do that. Uh, here we have the restrict metering modes where you can restrict the value of metering that you're going to have depending on what you want. Maybe you just have a favorite and you just want to shoot that way. Here we have the metering used in manual exposure adjustment you can choose from. Uh, set shutter speed range, so you can kind of put some limits to that. 
set aperture range. So you can set the aperture range as to what your camera will take and do. 1 to 91. That's pretty freaking awesome. AE micro adjustment. You can set it on or off. And you've got your FE micro adjustment for fine tuning flash exposure metering. Uh, and let's go back to the next tab. Or to the next time. Continuous shooting speed, you can set that up as to how many shots you want to have, high speed or low speed. Limit uh, your shot count, 75 shots, wow. Restrict your drive modes, you can do that also. Next tab over, you got your focusing screen, you can go standard or L, I don't know if that means large. Uh, you can do your viewfinder on or info during the exposure, during bulb, and record image size setting you can take and do there for the rear panel, the LCD panel, or the disable button. So let's move to the next one. You got your dial direction during TV and AV, a normal or reverse directional. You can set your AV setting without lens on or off. You got your multifunction lock. You can set this for either the main dial, the quick dial, control dial, or the multifunction. You got your custom controls in here where you can virtually go in and customize all the sort of uh, different buttons as to what you want to have them do in functions. This can be really great if you like just doing things your way. Um, and you have the button functions for the lock and the microphone on this device. And uh, you can set up how you want to have that doing and have it operate. Okay, so next one over is add cropping information. You can add any crop information that you take and want to put on there. Timing duration, you can adjust here for the timer. Shutter release lag. You can see here a lot of customization. Memo audio quality. When you're leaving a memo to a picture, uh, you can take and decide how much, how high quality you want. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of memos, you may want to make it lower. Uh, you've got your default erase option. That's how that works. And you got your same exposure for new aperture on iOS TV speeds and all that good stuff. And you can clear all the custom functions and start over very simply and easy, which makes it very nice. The next tab over is very simple. It's my menu settings where you can set up your own menu of stuff and be able to take and create what you want. So full customization you can do with the Canon 1DX and why would you expect anything less really when it comes down to it. Okay, so one other menu feature that's very unique to the Canon 1DX, I mean not only does it have the uh, on the top of the device it has your clear screen LCD where you can take and see what's going on. It has this file folder area and you can use it to customize uh, different things within the camera in and of itself. We have two card readers, so you can choose between the first or second card that you have in the case if you have two CF cards in here, of course. You can choose between your image size settings, whether it's large, medium, one, two, small, raw, medium, raw, or small. You can do that all from this menu right here as you so choose. You can even see what folder you're in in each of the different cards, and you can also see what file number you're on. <clears throat> now, if you're using several GPS, or GPS Bluetooth, wireless connection, different things, other elements will show up in the top of here, depend upon what you're uh, shooting with and what you've got attached to the camera. The FHD refers to full high definition recording quality for if we were to record videos. Of course, this will change depending upon if we go to H SD or HD. So there's several other different features that will pop up here, but this is the basics of what you'll see in operations and working. And it's in addition to what you'll see out of any Canon camera of this back area. After a few weeks of shooting with the Canon 1DX, I was just super impressed. Uh, made a ton of just gorgeous, beautiful photos that we uploaded to social media sites and the social media sites just went crazy for the quality of pictures we were putting up and for the camera. If you can afford this camera, whether you need to borrow the money to do it or be able to pay cash for it, this is the camera to own, the Canon 1DX. It is just an impeccable, beautiful, piece of machinery and it's going to get you the most gorgeous shots and the quality that you're looking for and it's, of course it's going to work just impeccably with your canon lenses that uh, you can take and utilize with this so go to usa.canon.com that's usa.canon.com tell them chris foss saying you this thing is a beautiful camera to take and own and i highly 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 recommend it be sure to check it out and be sure to give us a like subscribe to us on youtube we'll see you next time